Uh, guys, um, I read an old interview with you from one and a half years ago, and then you told uh, that your career was going exactly as you planned it. You know, waited a yeah. long time to release an album. And, and now um, the band got big. Is it still uh, all according to plan? Or? I think so. <laughs> so far, yeah. I mean, nothing's really changed in the last nine months apart from the fact that we have this, um, <laughs> which is everything that we wanted it to be. So, yeah, everything's on course, you know. The only thing that we can possibly go wrong is if it bombs, <laughs> which I'm sure it won't. Yeah, OK, but you're doing well, doing it uh, for like two years now uh, mm -hmm. or even longer. But hasn't there been moments that you thought, oh, this is um, not where we want to be at these moments? Yeah, yeah, but not only in isolation, only when you kind of maybe if there's certain I don't know, when, when, when we were touring the last record, uh, towards the end, we'd been touring for a long time, so there were moments where you get tired and you're a long way from home and you, I don't know, that shows itself and you start to get on stage and it's just not as exciting as it once was. Um, but, you know, you, you stop yourself and talk to yourself and you kind of go, well, you know... Uh, could be worse. Yeah, it could be a lot worse. <laughs> and, and then towards, after that, after some of those harder times that we did some of the best shows we've ever done, you know, at the very end of the last record campaign, so... Okay. Um, uh, no, it's, you got to make, you got to be very careful if you start moaning about your job when you're in a band, if you're, you know, in the deal or whatever and touring the world, because, because it's, of course it's all it's, you ever wanted it to be, you know, it's, I don't know, it, it's amazing. Yeah, okay. But can you name me uh, one moment when, when you thought, oh, I want to go home? Japan for me. I was, yeah, Japan? Yeah, for me, yeah. There's a few moments, actually. I don't bands. really have a home anyway. That's that's the thing that you kind of miss. You miss kind of going home. And, uh, you don't you know, have a home anyway. Yeah. Uh, I didn't at the time. No, okay. I didn't. I, I couldn't afford to live anywhere, so I just didn't bother. Um, so we were touring. So yeah, we were touring, so there was no need for me to have a place. Um, so yeah, I think that was the second most annoying thing as well. The fact that you want to go home, but you've got nowhere to go really, unless you want to stay with your parents, which isn't very rock and roll. As nice as they are, you know. But uh, Japan, every band loves to go to Japan. I mean, just for me, there was a, the, one of the trips we did there. Uh, if I had to pinpoint my lowest point, it would probably be there. Just felt like I was kind of, you know, going through the motions on stage. So lost touch with why we were doing it in the first place. And that just comes from being exhausted and being in a, the most alien environment you can be in as a band, pretty much. Um, I mean, I, I love it in Japan. It's an amazing place. But that, if I had to tag my lowest point of the last few years it would be there I think just yeah, it was tough okay. but you know it's not like I uh, I don't know was self-harming or had developed a crack habit habit I was you know just it was when it was at its toughest yeah okay and then when did you get the feeling back or was it just short moments um we had like a a week or something off after that or something like that and then we had some big festival shows the end of the summer, so some, the V Festival was out, um, some of them, um, some European ones that were mm. great as well. And we just, we just seemed to hit our stride again. And uh, we just, I, I don't know, maybe subcon we didn't really talk about it, you know, we didn't talk about these problems. I think subconsciously we all kind of reassessed what we were doing. And I think all of us as a, as a band, as four people on stage, we reached this new level of, uh, you know, unity. It was fun, it was, it was ace again. Yeah, yeah we literally just needed four or five days off to get mm. our marbles back together and it's just it is literally that simple mm. you know if you you just need some reality and if you don't get it then it starts becoming very very hard mm. okay but then, you, know, you know you learn you learn from you learn from everything so I, 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 who knows how this touring this record will go but i'd like to think we'll learn from the, the harder times of the last record and be able to kind of adjust and readjust as we have to as we're touring this one and when because obviously we're going to be playing these songs for probably two years now so um, which is a long time, but um, yeah, so we'll see how we go. You get, did you get fed up with the old songs? Fed up? Yeah, because yeah. it gets to a point, you know, yeah. you've played them, <laughs> some of them a lot, a lot. Which, which one? Is there one in particular? There's f Fall, the song Fall, on the first record. Uh, we, <laughs> we play that in sound, because for our sound man, it's a good one for the, for the sound check, because sonically it's great for, the, uh, for whatever room you're in, or whatever, boring sound reason. So, so we've played that song. Two times we played the gig, two times every day for every show we've ever done, pretty much. So, 
<laughs> you know what? I don't know how many shows we've done. 300? I don't know. 250? It's, it's, I'd say five or 600 times we've played that song just in, just in gigs, you know, not rehearsing or recording or anything, yeah. not even counting that. So probably about seven or, seven or 800 times I yeah. think we've played that song. Yeah, when we were rehearsing. This, yeah, so, um, so yeah, when you're playing that in soundcheck, you, you switch off. <laughs> uh, because you can do it without without thinking about it, but it is a bit of a it's a bit of a cliche. But when you do get on stage and play it for people, even after, on the millionth time, even at those festivals, at the end of you know after two years of touring the back room, it's still great. You know, it's still it's still amazing playing that song and seeing the people singing along. You know, or hearing people sing along. So, but yeah, of course you do. You, you're human. You know, you play the songs a lot of times. The things we didn't mm. want to do again. Um, I think you. I, no, I think there was more things that we, we. I mean, we had a really. We were really proud of our first record, and I thought it was a really good base to base the second one on. You know, and you know, we didn't. Again, we didn't want to make another first record. Um, we, you know, we changed producers for no other reason that we wanted to make something a little bit different and a little bit more grandeur. And, um, and that, yeah, that's all we wanted to do. Really, we we had no pretense about what it was going to be like or sound like or. Or anything like that. We just knew that it was good, had to be bigger and better, which yeah. it is. Okay. <laughs> I think anyway. Well, you might not agree. Yeah. But um, uh, the lyrics—they're all, all yours, huh? Yeah. They? Was, yeah. Was, yeah. They seem pretty dark. Yeah. And um, there, there, there had in your bio it says that there were some some events you uh, yeah, involving I mean, death. I just think, yeah. I mean, last couple of years um, I felt closer to that. Another, I think, but I also think uh, as you get older, it happens to everyone, you know, the people around you, your family, or you know, you, 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 things will happen. It's uh, it's uh, unavoidable that you'll, you'll start to feel closer to that. So, and there has been a couple of events in my life that have brought that to the front of my mind. So, writing a lot of lyrics, it does touch on, on, on death quite a lot in a lot of the songs. Um, but in most of the songs, there's also kind of this all overriding warmth and love on the record as well. So, even when I'm thinking about or singing about death, there's a kind of um, an acceptance and uh, a, a not not that much fear about it because of this kind of warmth and love as well. So even though the record is is dark, we've tried to make it uplifting and and, and exciting as well. Um, it's not just ah death. It's you know come on. Yeah, you always try to try to write hopeful lyrics. I think always or, or, or with it with a twist. Pretty much, yeah. With it, I think, yeah, having this kind of dark moments, but ha having, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel or the hope, and that that you know things are going to be okay or whatever. Yeah, I think that's I think that's there in the first record as well. Um, uh, yeah, definitely. I think okay. it's, it's funny with this record because a lot of people go, oh, oh, this is a this is a darker record than the first one. I think, and then a lot of people come and go, actually, it sounds a bit more a bit more colourful, a bit more vibrant. Um, we get both, 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 both opinions. I think we've done our job right, really. You know, so that was the idea. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Um, yeah. Some of the songs are, are are inspired by death. You say. Yeah. 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 All of my thoughts yeah. and mulling over yeah. things. Like that. Can Can you name one event? Um, the last song on the record uh, is called "Well Worn Hand," um, and I just talked about kind of um, <coughs> how a lot of the songs, when they touch on death, there's this kind of hope and this warmth. <laughs> In them that, you know, not not it's not just fear about death. It's kind of you know a, um, a realization that it's part of life, and in some ways, you know, it's part of life. It's not something to be scared of. But um, well, one hand is a song written after I heard someone I went to school with, and a friend of mine for a while um, was killed on his way home from work, just beaten to death for no other reason than um, who he was. And uh, you know, it's not about specifically the things that happened to him or him as a person. It's just on hearing that news, I can't, you know, just thinking, well, you know, when there's people out there that can do that type of thing to another person, what's the point in even opening the front door and going outside? You know, what's the point? So lock the door and, and hide away and, and, and just forget everything else, really. And uh, so, yeah, I think that's the one song on the record that touches on that, that death, but there's no hope. There's no, because I can't really put any hope into that situation. Um, and again, the way we did it as well, you know, me and Chris, um, it's done in one take, it's just me on the piano and Chris at the same time. Um, uh, it was, yeah, it was just one take and there's mistakes on it, um, but it's more powerful because of it. And the records, you know, there were some huge moments on the record, really big epic stuff going on, strings and millions of guitars and choirs, 
and it was important. So the record came to an end with something small, powerful, and really dark for us, because um, yeah, that's kind of where our hearts are really in that kind of yeah. darkness, I guess. Okay. And the title, an end as a start. Mm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, again. Well, I, what's the start in well, the Well, I, I, I don't really know, but just just thinking about what a lot of the songs touch on lyrically, you know, what we've talked about. Um, uh, it just seemed to kind of, in a way, sum up those kind of thoughts and those feelings, you know, you know, realizing that death is, is, is part of life and, and in a lot of ways is unavoidable and is not that much of a scary thing. Um, it just seemed like an end of the start kind of summed that up in, in, in certain respect. Yeah, okay. Is this the first time that you, that it's, that it's so much in your mind? This, yeah, more you know, than ever before. Mortality? Yeah. Yeah, more than ever before, yeah, definitely. Yeah. But like I said, I, I, I can't stop myself from writing about these things when I sit down to write lyrics, you know, it, it just, it'll, it'll come out. I, I find it really hard to write about things that, well, to me, don't mean anything, you know. These songs mean everything, the words mean everything to me because they, they come from me, but even if some people think it's nonsense, you know, I, I can't stop myself from doing it. Yeah, okay. Um, one of the greatest li uh, lines on the album, I think, is from the first song, the saddest thing I've ever seen, mm -hmm. a smoke is outside the hospital doors. Mm -hmm. Can you remember when you wrote that? Or wh um, what was in your mind? Uh, it's, 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 well, that's an image of disease and suffering that stuck with me from when I was a kid, you know, mm -hmm. visiting grandparents or whatever in hospital, and seeing the people outside the front um, with the drips and having fags, you know, it's, it's a very striking thing. And, uh, and uh, to just writing a song about how disease and illness and stuff, um, like when the younger is very, uh, very disturbing and probably the most disturbing thing you can see and, and go through but as you get older you kind of you see what goes on in the world and you turn on the news or pick up paper and things are more terrifying there than than disease and suffering really is so um, I don't remember when it wrote it just came to me when I was writing the song you know it came came through but it was I think it's always been in my head since I first saw it you know. really strong image yeah definitely and it's about I think mm. writing lyrics is about having these kind of images that kind of make oh that's a you know and uh, yeah that's Having kind of little riddles and little, little kind of you know things that are strong, you know, strong imagery, you know, it's good. Yeah. And then the music, I, th I think this this album, especially the, the first song, it, it sounds very big. Mm. Was it um, on purpose? Um, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we <we're, laughs> like, again, again, I have to go back to the fact that we weren't really doing anything on purpose. You know, we'd like to the it to be as, as organic as possible. The fact is that Garrett Lee doesn't make little records. And um, basically from making a kind of a wiry, post-punk first record, we've gone something which is sonically this big, you know? And um, as far as we have this big spectrum where we can put a lot of instruments that are providing different frequencies, that are doing different things, and um, that kind of interests us, you know, just, just discovering new music. That, you know, that we, I was just told to buy as many pedals as I could afford, and, uh, different guitars and anything like this and synths and anything that would make something sound strange and um, that's basically what we did just to make it sound sonically large basically. <laughs> it, is, yeah. Yeah, it is big. I think yeah. the first song is the biggest thing we've ever done. I don't think we could, I don't struggle to think how we could make a song bigger than that really. Um, it, well, yeah, the choir helps. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, how, how, what, what, how, how did you come with the idea? Oh, the it's choir? just like, we're just, we're doing the song, got towards that last section of the song, it's like, well, how can we make this song move forward from here, you know, how can it, we've got that small break now, how can we, and that, that kind of melody, da, 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 we realise it kind of fit over the last section of the song, it's like, oh, hang on, let's just get loads of us singing it, yeah, it's a choir, I guess, it's just loads of voices doing it, and then when my vocal comes back in at the end, we just thought, it would be this moment of, you know, this release, this moment that you just kind of go, ah. Yeah, Garrett used to talk about um, almost religious euphoria and stuff like this and hitting peaks and mm. uh, trying to find the right moment in the song for it to either be an up or a down. Mm. And um, you've got to do a lot of other things in the song to make sure that when you get to that level, it's the biggest thing that, you know, the biggest high or the biggest low um, that it's possible for you to achieve. So we were just trying to you know, get to that level on pretty much every song. Mm. There was always something, it was always, it kind of made you think that the song is going somewhere and it has a meaning and you have to get to that place. Yeah, yeah. I was pretty surprised by, by that song, 
because uh, especially the end, because um, when you uh, your first album, uh, lots of people compare you to to bands like Joy Division, mm. but this is almost Coldplay, Coldplayish, don't you think? It's it's mm. as far down that road <laughs> as we've ever gone. Oh, <laughs> that hurts. I don't know. Um, this is this is far down that road we've ever gone. It's a big sounding song. I think it sounds. I was thinking more Arcade Fire. That was, can, can I say that instead? Yeah. That's, it's your band. <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, it's more in the kind it, of... It's, it also depends what you mean by that. If you mean it's kind of bland music for the masses, then uh, it's, yeah. not, it's big, not, you know. You know it's, it's, well, it is big, yeah, you know. Mm. But, you, but, see, you see a stadium when you hear it. Well, you know? yeah, we'll see where it takes us, but um, <laughs> it's definitely... It's weird, because I think Bullets and uh, something like Open Your Arms, I think they, always, they that's hinting at, hinting at that anyway, you know. I think it's always been in our band. Yeah, I think, like I said, that song is the... It's as far down that road as we've ever gone, you know, and it's this big statement, you know. It's a song. It's a song about, you know, death and disease and being scared about what goes on in the world. But it's also the most uplifting thing we've ever done, and that's Ace. Uh, I don't care if you, if people if if, if oh, oh, it sounds a bit like Coldplay. Well, it depends what you mean by that, you know. Do you mean that, like I said, it's bland, watered down music for the masses? Well, well, it, well it's not. But if do you mean, I don't know. I think there are moments in some Coldplay records that are amazing. And if, if oh, me too. Yeah, yeah, so, um, yeah, it's weird. I'm not saying it as a bad thing, but uh, unexpected yeah, with, okay. with, compared with your first album. Yeah, mm. we, we got some Coldplay comparison on the first record. Well, didn't we, we did, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure people will say some of the later songs sound like Joy Division as well. Yeah. yeah. We, we know we wouldn't want to let them down. <laughs> <laughs> There's always yeah, another band. You never really listened to Joy Division. Not yeah, I, 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 I used to listen to Joy Division. You did? Yeah, I okay. think I was the only one that really actually yeah. gave them any kind of time. Mm. I don't think anyone was... Uh, I wasn't a massive fan or anything. I was just, it was just when I was getting into... So I'm a big Bunnyman fan, so from mm. there I discovered kind of other bands of that ilk. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's about the only thing. But, you know, as far as Joy Division guitarists go, you know, Bernard Sumner isn't the best guitarist in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, no great respect to Bernard Sumner being... Yeah. A legend and everything, but uh, you know, as a guitarist, he's I'm sure would be the first to admit, yeah, you know, he wasn't technically uh, no. the best, no, not the best singer either. <laughs> no, <laughs> god, he's rubbish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, about singing, um, Tom, you, your voice, uh, I always when I when I heard, heard your music, I, I think yeah. you, you, your voice sounds very. Old or mature, okay. and you look so young. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, did it, how did My you voice start singing? So. You should see that. <laughs> <laughs> Looks it's nice. wrinkly. Yeah. Um, how did I? Yeah, well, when you started singing, um, is this your natural voice? Yeah, yeah, it just um, just comes out, doesn't it? You know, you don't change. You can't choose what you uh, what you've got really with your voice. You, you just sing. Um, you find out where where you're comfortable singing, and I think with the first record, it kind of sits here in my safety zone and with with um with a new record as we, with every element of this band we've tried to push ourselves and be ambitious so there are moments on the new record where it's gone higher gone places i've never gone before as it were but that's just for for trying to push myself and and and, and test yourself and I, and I don't think you get anything rewarding from life if you don't try and move forward and challenge yourself and so so some of the some of the lyrics that all the the, the registers are higher in this new album but um as where it comes from, I don't know where it comes from. It comes from, it comes from me. What, what were your, uh, what are, you, are your favourite singers? Well, favourite singers? Um, yeah. Oh, well, well, Michael Stipe is one that comes to to to, to mind quickly. Guy Garvey. Um, I love um, the National, the new band, the National. Um, yeah. I love Matt. Is it Matt Bellamy? Is it Matt, Matt Bella? Mm -hmm. Not Matt Bellamy. Matt <laughs> Beringer. Beringer. Yes. No. Um, uh, yeah, I don't particularly like that. Well, it's a great singer, but, I, but uh, like like Michael Stipe, what particularly do you, do you I, find, I, find good? I, in I like what what he does? lots of things about Michael Stipe, um, but uh, um, obviously as a frontman and performer, um, amazing. Um, but um, I don't know. The lyrics are kind of intriguing. A little kind of the turn of phrase, his delivery. So even on some of the later songs, like Ebo the Letter off New Adventures in Hi-Fi, the delivery in that song is unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, and his voice has changed as he's got older, you know, he's got more character in it now. Um, uh, oh yeah, just, just a, a, an evolving front man and singer that is always interesting, you know, even if you don't think so much of the, 
the new stuff. I think he's, he's, he's never not been interesting. And I like the yeah. first records a lot. We can't really hear what he's saying. Uh, it's, you know, it's kind of, the murmur album. Yeah, the yeah. murmur, and even, even the reckoning as well, kind of. Yeah, just great. You know. Okay. Um, last last question. Um, totally something totally different. Um, you met in in a university in mm. Birmingham. What did you do there? Yeah, music technology. Which is? I'm still not sure. <laughs> still not sure. Three years down the line, it was supposed to be kind of. Um, Working behind a, you know, a mixing desk and uh, recording other bands. Okay. Um, but we even did. Uh, you all four did that. Yeah, yeah, all four of us did it. Yeah. Mm. What were your ambitions at that point? I think it's. I think really all of us are like, it's a course to go and do if you want to. Well, yes, one if you want to be a record producer, or whatever. But I don't think any of us really, really want to do that. We wanted to be in a band, but we hadn't met the right people to do it. So it's the type of course you can go to and maybe meet people that want to do the same thing. Um, it's kind of a renowned failed musician kind of course. You know, if you can't make it as an artist, then you second best thing. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you get to work with the artists. Um, you know, we hadn't failed yet, but we thought it would be an interesting thing to do. Yeah, but anything you learned there? Um, well, it's, the most important thing. You it's learned? funny we did like sub modules on like, economics <laughs> and mathematics and stuff, didn't we? Which I didn't really see how it fit in. Um, I don't know. I mean, it got you used to being in a studio, I guess, and. You know, you're not completely incompetent when it comes to working a, a sampler or something like that, or it just makes you... I think the only thing that I really understood about it was um, about keyboards and stuff and understanding oscillators, and that kind of helped me operate keyboards, but that, that's about as far as it went. OK. And you weren't in bands at that time? Not to start with. I'm, no. But no. I think we, most of us were in a band at school, and obviously that finishes when you, well, when you finish school, when you go to university. And, um, yeah, so there was a point where it's just like, OK, New start, new friends, and see what happens. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, guys. Cool. Thank <laughs> Thanks, you. Sir.